Hello and welcome. In this video I will be building a house for the alchemist on top of this stone tower. It will be kind of a wizard looking house is the idea. At the end of this video I will also do kind of a showcase of the whole tower where I walk through every compartment and show like a lot of the stuff inside. Sometimes I google for reference pictures online to come up with ideas but this time I thought it would be interesting and also faster to sketch something myself to try out different ideas. Prototyping in game to try different shapes how it would look is really time consuming if I want to kind of move the walls to different places, change roof style, stuff like that. While doing it, like sketching it, if I keep it rough, if I don't care about the details, if I don't care if the perspective is a tiny bit off, um, if I don't care about stuff like that, I can try different stuff really, really fast and come up with kind of a rough sketch of how I want the house to be in like 50 minutes or so. I think I managed to come up with some interesting shapes and hopefully it will look great on top of the tower. And in this video, we show step by step how to build it as well as hopefully a lot of great outdoor and indoor detailing. I have built a bit of temporary floor here, it makes it a lot easier when you build stuff high up. If you don't have a huge stone tower to make this build or build this build on top of, you can just put it on top of like a um, basement or something like that. I think that would look alright as well. I will actually put the walls a bit in from the border or from the edge, uh, because I plan to put some flower soil here, to or, or soil to, to plant flowers and some greenery uh, in between. I also experimented with putting the walls in different like places. Uh, looking from ground perspective and I think it looked a uh, tiny bit better putting them in, like, like a bit in like that. So this is where the tower should be, so I will place this one here, uh, make it a bit broader like this. And over, over here the same thing, like this. Then switch materials again. Um, back to putting the wall in here, is that in the correct place? I think so. And I also want this house to be rather tall, so I think I want to make it like one and a half wall high, so that would be like four cubes up from the wall, one, two, three, four, about that height. So I will just add that all around. The half timber block is also something I kind of want on the outside of the building, but not on the inside. Uh, so it will have double walls, because I think I want the fancy stone block on the inside. Uh, I think that will look great later on. So I will just add that all around here. I'm cutting a hole here so we can actually get out on the platform. I will not build a structure in the front just yet, because I want an easy way out to these platforms as well as the platforms I built here as well now, in preparation for building the roof. So let's start by building the gables of the house, the roof, plus putting the tower in place. I want the roof to overhang about as much from the wall as the tower goes out from the wall, so like this. And also two cubes out on the gables. So I will do like this all the way around, over here as well. So it should be like this. And also two out, uh, so like this I believe. And then I will just do the same thing on the other side and connect everything together. The roof is done now and I will start building the tower higher up and I want the tower to be clearly visible from uh, ground level so I will experiment like building it upwards and check how it looks from the ground. So I think that is roughly the height I want it, maybe a few cubes lower but not much. To build the roof on this tower I need another set of um, platforms to walk on. 
it's actually really easy to fall down when building this high up. I do it usually a lot of times. It's not that bad. You can always bring the glider out, but it's a long way down and then it's a long way up again. This might actually be too large of a piece. I might have to use the small ones. Yeah. I want a little bit of overhang here as well. So something like that should be nice. I wish the, this kind of um, this tower could have a little bit more pointy roof. But, well, we only got like one inclination on the roof, so it is what it is. This is what we got to work with. So it should be here, right? Yeah, that looks correct. And I got to fix that. I feel like I should add something on top there, like a flagpole, but I'll figure out that later when we do something about the uh, detailing for this build. Oops! about falling down long way down so the roof of the tower is not exactly as I envisioned I wanted it a lot more pointy a lot more visible from the ground but the alternative if I want a more pointy tower is to do something like this and I simply don't think that will look good so I will have to live with that and instead let's work on the front section of the house I want this section to be centered on the house and start about here on the left hand side of the door so how many steps is this one two three four five so that would be same on this side one two three four five and then here i guess is that correct one two three four five yeah and it should go up to roughly the same level as the rest of the building so let's see if i can do that without falling down as well and i wanted to go out a little bit more as well so like this also up here and on the other side of course the same thing Hopefully without falling down to the ground again. And I also wanted to overhang and go down a bit. So maybe four cubes down. I might have to move that window later. I will see how it sits. Two, three, like this maybe. So let's remove these ones and check how it looks from the ground. I think that looks alright. I can even make it like a bit more outwards, like one cube more out from the wall. And if I bring it upwards like one cube, I think the window can stay as well. I'm not sure about that, but I will try to do those changes and then add the roof as well. A little bit of wall section here and then we can put the roof on. Let's see, like this. And I also need something in the middle, uh, let's see, like this and this. And grab a roof tile, same as for the rest of the roof. Is that better? Oops, again, not again. In towards the wall here and on the other side as well. I'm falling way too much, it's probably me being very, very clumsy. Talking, building and the balancing at the same time is just one thing too many. So this is what it looks like now and say for the pointed tower I think I came quite close to what I envisioned and I think it will look even better once we got all the outdoor detailing, windows and stuff like that in place. It's really dark inside now so I really need to add some windows so you can actually see what's going on but before I do that I want to add the chimney and I want it to lead up from this place all up to the roof. So let's cut a hole in the roof about here, I think it's alright. And now since we know where the chimney is supposed to be, we can build it up from the roof as well. I'm also replacing every single corner of the sections here that are made out of refined wood uh, for plant fiber roof because it looks like really nice big wooden beams and I think that adds quite a lot to the build. You can see I've done it over here. It's really pain because you have to do it block by block so there's no fast way of doing it but I think the end result is kind of worth the hassle. I moved the window towards the center, so my idea here is to place beams like these ones on either side of the window, so it looks like they are supporting this part of the structure. I also replaced these parts here, just one cube, I think, with shroud wood, so I get kind of a bit more of a foundation going as well. The sun is not really helping here with all of this part in the shadow, but I hope you can see what I'm doing here. 
so when you want to make a beam like the one up there, if you put the plant fiber roof like this, you got almost a beam, but you see the edges don't really look nice. And the way you solve it is you make a little hole in the wall, place one plant fiber roof inside of the wall, and same up here in the roof. And now we got kind of something that looks a lot more like a beam. Uh, let's just make another one on this side. And now we got two nice beams here supporting the structure, just like the big platform up there. So now we got to solve the issue over here. We got the same issue over here, even though it's not as visible. So if we would uh, kind of extend the wall one upwards, it would clip through the roof instead. And there are several ways you can solve it. I will actually use a way my viewers suggested in the comment section of one of my previous videos by using double roof. So for this section, we don't need double roof all across the roof. We can just add a section of the double roof just along the border here. I will show what I mean. So if it just looks nice now, you can hardly see the gaps in between. You could let the wall here stick up through the roof and then add another layer of roof all across the roof here to hide it. But you can also, like I did over here, uh, just add a bit of roof here along the edge. You need it uh, too wide because this one sticks out two instead of this one that sticks out one. It's done, you can still see kind of small details here from the half timber block along the edge, but you can't really hide it completely, and I think it looks a lot better than not doing it at all. Let's start with the windows for the towers because they are going to be round, at least the ones at the very top. And the holes need to be 7x7, seven seven, I think. Was that 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah that's correct. Something like this I think. You just make one and see if that looks all right, and then I add other ones. Six by six, I mean, not seven, so I have to add one row back. Let's do that. And put the window in, like this. I think it would be all right. And then we add some of these ones. Like this. Let's do the same thing here, 6x6, six six. let's see. Oh, I'm out of windows. Need to go and get more windows. Building stuff high up can really be a pain. There we go. Uh, I think I actually need to replace the sides here with uh, roof tiles as well because it looks a bit too rugged, I think, along the edge there. I will just do one to see how it looks. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better, so let's do that all the way around. I think it looks good now. I might change the pattern with the small windows inside later on, but for now let's uh, head over here and start with some windows for this section and windows for the big house because that will also really help uh, when doing detailing in indoors to actually see something, right? If we got some daylight in there. I removed a pretty large section of the wall here. Uh, I'm not sure if this will look good yet. I will have to kind of check from ground level, I think. Uh, but uh, I kind of want really large windows here. At least if I can get away with it. Oh, these ones are not positioned in the same way as the lower ones. That will annoy me. Let's uh, fix that. Like this, right? Yeah, that was the same. I think I like it. I'm not 100% sure, but I will leave it like that for now and maybe get back to it later and do some changes. I removed the large section of the wall here to let in all the lights from the big window. I'm not really sure what to do with this compartment yet. Uh, maybe a hidden compartment or, well, find some use for it. I added a window there and a window over here as well. And uh, let's go outside. So this is what it looks like from the outside now. I think I came quite close to what I had envisioned in my sketch. 
Uh, there's small details to be done on the outside still, but for now let's move on to the inside and inside detailing. We'll start by improving how the inside of the wooden tower looks. By using the plant fiber roof again as different types of wooden beams in combination with shroud wood. Adding wooden ladders leading up to the top so you can actually get there from the inside as well as a few floors in between. And also try to kind of remove some of the material to make the inside look more spacious. I'm not really sure what I will do with the middle floor here, maybe some little storage area. I added some beams up here and this area now looks really open and nice. I will fix um, the gables here kind of the same way as I did on the outside and at the same time I think I will add some beam work here leading down to these beams. I think that will go really great together so that's next up. To add a beam here I will use a different type of roof than I did on the outside because if I add the same type of roof here I get kind of these kind of small triangles going out and that's not nice. So let's just pick a different one and uh, let's see it like this. You can see now I'm not getting those triangles. I had to put some temporary cubes to stand on as well here. I'll remove them as soon as I'm done. And I want to add it here as well, so we kind of go together with that one. Over here, uh, I will change this one for a roof tile. And you won't really see that little detail here from the ground, so I think that's alright. Do the same thing here. Alright, time to remove these ones. And I think the roof looks really nice now. I think in this area I want to build floor out here and the hidden compartments are lid down to kind of a small storage area here. Uh, so let's remove a few cubes here and place this hidden compartment kind of over here like this. Actually it should move one towards this side because I don't want it to fold out into the stairs. But before I do that I want to show something. Like if you want to place stuff below where the lid is, you have to do that before placing uh, the lid or the trap door or whatever it's called, right? Because the hitbox is rather large from that. So let's pick that one up again. And I just put all the stuff I want here first. I think this will be fine. Uh, so I just want it kind of to look like there is a lot of stuff stuffed down there if you open the lid. Uh, so secret door was the name of it, secret door passage. Anyway, uh, like this, and then we add a bit of floor. So I have to grab um, this one over here and some refined wood. And then just cover this. So all that remains is kind of a little bit of a lid down below, right? So something like that maybe. Let's see how it looks. So we open the lid like this, it folds into the floor here. And we can see a lot of stuff uh, below there. I think that looks nice. So that's the little, it's not really a hidden compartment though because you can very clearly see the lid. So it's more like a lid with a storage area in the floor. It put all the stuff for the alchemist on the floor. I will kind of try to find nice locations for them. Um, first out is this big thing, the alchemist station. And I want that one to be inside kind of a fireplace because I want somewhere for the smoke to go up through the chimney that kind of looks natural. So the chimney was too wide here and I made it three wide instead because I thought it needed to be a bit bigger on the outside. Uh, so I will start by actually making a fireplace over here. I want to integrate this one in a natural way in the fireplace, which proved to be kind of hard because I used the fire brick for the chimney. Because of a fireplace I have one store ridge below this one, uh, but I think I can do it kind of somewhat good by turning it around like this and then filling out with regular bricks that got the same color so I got kind of a mix of materials in the fireplace. So 
So it looks fairly integrated now. I don't think I can make it fit much better than this. So I will pick it up because I want some torches actually below the kettle to make it look like there's some fire there. So I will just hide a few of them here inside of the uh, inside of the ground. I think that's all right. I think there's roughly about where the kettle is. Let's put this one back and then like this. Should be a little bit more towards here. So like this maybe. Now we got a little bit more fire below the kettle as well. I think that looks all right. And then we can add the rest of the chimney or add the rest of the fireplace. So let's grab this one, the fire brick, and this should be an all right height for it. Sides there, I can't really do much about the airplane sounds in the background, unfortunately. I kind of regret using fancy stone for this room because fancy stone got the problem that as soon as it kind of meets another material, it does this. It adds kind of wooden details around it, which sometimes can be really nice and sometimes not. Uh, so what I think I will do is actually replace of this fancy stone with regular stone blocks because even though they're very different texture wise they're quite close color wise and since it's just a small section above the fireplace I think it won't be that noticeable. So this is the finished alchemy station I think it looks quite all right I don't know how much you can pick up on the airplane sounds like from the airplanes flying above I can't really do much about it and it might be going on all day I live in the wrong part of Sweden for that not to happen once in a while Anyway, let's move on to this bookshelf wall. There used to be a pillar going down here, just like over here. I removed it because I really wanted kind of a bookshelf wall and the pillar was right in the way of the only real place I could place it. And the way I stacked them this close together is a very simple trick using shelves that I will show you. If you place bookshelves on top of each other like this, you get kind of a gap in between them. So what you do instead is placing a shelf. You place first the bookshelf to have something to measure with. And then the shelf like this should be all right, I think. And then you can place the second bookshelf at roughly this height, uh, which is more or less the same as the first. So like this should be all right. Remove the first bookshelf, place another shelf on the wall, come up here, place the second bookshelf up here. So they align like this, really close and nice together. Now we can remove all the stuff down here. including the shelves, because they were only there to be able to place the upper part of the bookshelf. And then you can place the bookshelves on the ground, so they kind of melt together like one big bookshelf. Like this. I filled the bookshelves with books, added some lamps in the ceiling, all the different parts of the alchemist crafting stations, and well, some other stuff in here. I feel like in the long run though, I will add some more stuff to make it feel like more fleshed out. I also added a bit of outside detailing. For the flower box there, I got a different video. And the upper part of the window here is actually a wooden table sunk into the wall. Since the wall is two cubes thick, it will actually stick out just a tiny bit on both sides, adding a little bit of detailing. All the greenery here along the side is just a bit of farm soil and then planting different bushes, nettles and stuff like that. For the windows on the tower, I added some wooden shutters. I will put a link in the video description to a guide for those. So this was my original sketch for the house on top of the tower, and this is how it looks now when it's finished. Let's take a look inside, including all the rooms in the stone tower as well. But before we do that, I want to say a few words about what inspired me to make this stone tower. It was this very beautiful but also ruined stone tower that you can find on the map over here. Here's the cinder vault for reference. I think it's just a great build, uh, a lot of nice details, nice shapes, choice of location everything very well put together. So I kind of wanted to make my version of that. And if you look at my tower uh, on my build, you can see it shares quite a lot of similarities with this tower. There are two entrances to the tower, both the main door here across the wooden bridge and through the basement of the blacksmith house down here. Let's open the door. And then there's a secret door here with a tunnel and some stairs leading up to the tower. And up here is another secret door leading out to the first floor of the stone tower. Here is the main entrance. In here is a little chapel. Well, something that used to be a chapel. I kind of like to imagine that the alchemist got here and there was a stone tower already in place. 
And this used to be some religious part of the building where people came to pray. But then the alchemist came along, built his house on top of the stone tower, and then put, well, all of his not very religious stuff in here. The stairs here lead up to a little bathroom. And here's a little window looking down into the chapel and up towards the second floor. Some nice wooden details here on the middle section where I used the new wooden windows, the round windows, as part of this wall. The room divider here is something I picked up from the Lindsay Gaming's YouTube channel. I put a link in the description below to that. Uh, but pretty much using paintings as a room divider, really nice like this. And here is the sleeping area for the alchemist, as well as a little balcony here. Uh, with the, I, I would say, like amazing view over the whole game world. And up here on the third floor, well, that's the place we were working on inside of the actual house on top of the tower with all the crafting stations for the alchemist as well as the ladder up here to the tower. A little storage area kind of halfway up. And some plants up here growing in all the light from the round windows that would have had an amazing view if it wasn't for the rather aggressive bloom effect. The devs are aware of this. So it's something I think they're actually working on reducing so it will be easier to kind of look out from a darker area into a lighter one. So this is the whole building including the tower from ground perspective. I hope you liked the video. If you did give a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I will make a lot more shrouded content but also for other games of course in the future. Uh, like here you can see the wooden shutters and all the detailing including the little chapel area here where I use some weathered stone to get this kind of rounded effect on the pillars. Look around on the back here, it's kind of a steep angle to look at, but you can see the detailing below where like this wooden part here, where you got like the bathroom, the bedroom and stuff like that. On towards this side, I tried to make it kind of look good from most direction, make it kind of screenshot worthy, regardless of like point of view. Well, I think that's the end of this video. Cheers!